All right, I'm going to talk about a neural network today. Uh, in the past, we've looked at decision trees, and we've also looked at regular regression, an extension of regression, but one in which uh, we're, we're able, or at least the computer is able, to modify our inputs in a way that really closely matches the data is the neural network. And I will just drag this down and demonstrate how it works. I'm going to go from my impute node, meaning I'm taking, uh, in this case, uh, the data that preceded it. So following along, I replaced some data, split the data, transformed and replaced some more data, imputed some missing values. So I have quite a number of uh, variables available right now in X, probably 36 or so, um, give or take a few. And uh, the one thing that we want to do uh, according to our instructions is to go under optimization and change it to enable preliminary training no and then run it. Alright it's finished running I click on results and after a brief delay it opens up and as I would typically do I want to see how well it performed so I look over at average squared error and see 0.2429 24 percent and uh, mis actually I don't know if it's a percent but um, misclassification rate 40 now that one is a percent so it's wrong 43 percent of the time with what it came out with and if I maximize that well first I'll I'll kinda note here this this uh, window which indicates that after about 11 iterations it found a good number of variables that would work and then uh, as it continued to optimize and put probably more variables into the model it really got worse and worse in terms of predicting data that it hadn't seen so it's probably over training so that's kind of the magic of neural networks is that they're really good at being able to fit any kind of data doing transformations to the inputs and putting many combinations of them into the model uh, but in overfitting for one set of data and all of its nuances it gets worse and worse on data that it hasn't seen so you want to kind of pick the t the place at, w at which it uh, does the best job at predicting the data that it hasn't seen yet if I open up this window um, I see that it actually used uh, 253 weighted variables uh, as part of its procedure so that's quite a bit more than regular and uh, it's actually this uh, categorical variable that's given us a bunch bunch of trouble or at least a lot of uh, instances and at some point along the line it's going to tell us that it does not converge um, it's going to take me a minute to find that spot but it uh, right there it says it needs more iterations and if you read the book you'll notice that it says hey change that to a hundred and it still doesn't uh, complete um, and yeah so that's gonna happen probably more likely when you have too many variables in the model now 253 is a lot so one of the things that we can do to get rid of the complexity that that is part of this model is to only use um, inputs potential variables into this model that we've tested and we believe are important so it'll take the the known important stuff and then further optimize that so let's just say if income is, income level is an important variable well maybe it could turn that into two or three variables in a way uh, or weights and by modifying it maybe it'll do some squares and some logs and something else and, and, and so some combination of that will really closely fit the data even better than just what the regular regression would do um, and so what we do is we take the, the stuff identified by one of our regression models which is going to then be a subset of our original set of data or set of potential variables columns that are that are important and um, in this case I know regression passes along everything so I'm not going to use that uh, instead I will tack it on to my 
uh, one of my stepwise regression model because I know that limits the number of variables that are used. Regular regression by default uses everything, but a forward, backward, or stepwise procedure is going to just select the important ones and throw out all the ones that don't matter. So if I pass in just the ones that matter, then what should happen is I will get um, a model which is created only with useful stuff and it should perform better. And stepwise generous, if you recall from the book, uh, that was, so I'll call this neural generous. If you recall from the book that this one is where we enter things into the model at every single step, every iteration, uh, with 100% probability, meaning 1.0, meaning it's going to try every single variable at each step, but then it's going to kick out anything that is higher than 0.5 in uh, significance. Uh, so that's still a pretty loose way to enter data into the model, but uh, also I'll run that. All right, I'm now displaying the results of this model, which had fewer inputs originally. Uh, this time it still says model degrees of freedom are 217. Uh, so if I were to scroll down, I'm going to see that it used 217 hidden variables. They all have an H in here. Um, that indicates that they're part of that second, like a regression. These are variables that determine the outcome. Uh, but they're, these are the variables that are created from the first, from the original variables, and then only these kind of weighted variables are used in predicting the outcome at that point. And we see that for this particular model, that there are that at seven iterations, that looks like it's when it found the best model to use, and in terms of misclassification rate. Uh, for a little less than 42 percent. That sounds uh, better than the number that we saw before. The uh, average squared error looks about the same. Something that you might also try as you work on real-world data sets is the auto neural option. Uh, your book explains a couple of settings that you have to change if you want to include that in the model. Uh, but uh, again, if it gives you better results, it may be worth it may be worth using and going through the effort to update a couple of settings. Now, uh, in my diagram here, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 different uh, models that have used inputs to select some outcome. And it's, it would be interesting to know at this point which one performed the best. Now, of course, one really annoying way to do that would be to right-click on each one and then write the results down somewhere else, but that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to the Assess tab and look for Model Comparison. Bring that down, and I'm going to connect each of my models to this. and then I'll run it. In the future I'll talk more about what these other graphical windows mean but for the time being we can just use this fit statistics window to look at how the different models did. Um, this one that says model description uses the actual names that we used and we can see that the selected model here is marked with a Y indicating that this uh, second this one that I named Neural Generous is the model that's going to perform the best on the validation data. So if I look out far enough, I will, from training, eventually I'll, I'll let's see if I can find it there somewhere, uh, validation misclassification rate. Um, I can click on this and I can sort it top to bottom and uh, you know lowest to highest. And of course, this is the lowest misclassification rate. and um, it remains selected. I, I believe it's possible that you could have a different uh, average squared error rate, uh, but in this case, uh, both of these, you know, in other words, 
Um, it's possible, I believe, that you might have maybe this might be number one for misclassification rate, but I think it it could have you know it could be second or third for average squared error, uh, I believe. So just depending on what you're targeting, um, better per, um, if you're targeting uh, a prediction of just yes or no, that's what the misclassification rate is for. But if you want to target instead, you know, the actual percentage of likelihood of something happening, um, then you're better off looking at the average squared error. Now just as a side note, the data that's up here in the fit statistics is also down here in the output. It's just a little bit less nice to read uh, down here in the output window. Uh, one final comment I would make is that uh, in comparing the models and, and selecting the one that I would use to discuss with management, uh, uh, this is just my own personal bias. Uh, unless the misclassification rate or average squared error uh, for the neural network is significant, like the, the quantity, the magnitude of the differences is large. Um, you can define large for yourself. I would probably go with something that's a little bit easier to to work with and explain. There's a relatively small difference between like a reg this regular regression, which probably picked out about nine variables, and this neural network, which might have in excess of 230 variables in this case. And so, uh, given the difficulty of programming that into some software to classify, you know, somebody as you know, a likely donor or a likely fraud candidate or whatever, uh, you're, you're probably going to have an easier time implementing something that has, you know, seven or six variables rather than 230. Uh, but if it were a big difference and if it were worth, you know, potentially billions of dollars in savings over the course of the year, then, then yeah, by all means, go program in the, the stuff from the neural network and just say, hey, it's transformations of our input variables and it's kind of magic, whereas you could actually explain uh, the forward one very, very clearly uh, if you wanted to do so.